Uh, Europe's energy industry is in crisis as soaring natural gas prices worldwide hit industries and individuals. The situation in Europe is especially grave as gas reserves fall to alarmingly low levels and demand ratchets are higher when winter is approaching. Now, Oli Barrett joins us now. Oli, clearly the energy sector is under stress. Uh, what has been the fallout for a UK industry and for consumers? Well, here in the UK, we've already seen several smaller energy providers go bust. And part of the reason for that is that there is a government mandated energy price cap in place in Britain. The government says that is to protect consumers from rapidly rising unforeseen prices, even if wholesale prices go up. The difficulty for some smaller providers, they say, is that as prices have spiked in uh, record speed and in record ways, they haven't been able to pass those costs on to the consumers and many of them haven't been afford, able to afford to stay in business. The government says they should have been better at hedging against uh, unforeseen price rises and blames those companies for not being well run enough. For the consumer, what that means is many have seen their energy providers going bankrupt and have therefore been moved by the regulator to another energy provider. Some of them will end up on a higher tariff as a result. That energy price cap is reviewed uh, on a rotating basis. And so coming down the track, there are price rises ahead for the UK consumer as well, even with that energy price cap in place. One further issue here is that the gas price rises have led to uh, real difficulties with CO2 production in the UK. That has fed into fears of a shortage of food and drink that rely on the CO2 supply. That led to the UK government bailing out one fertiliser company to make sure uh, that the gaps were not seen on supermarket shelves as a result of spiking energy prices. Well, this is fundamentally a supply problem that has caused gas prices to soar across the globe. So um, what can Britain, uh, the EU or anyone else do about it? It's a difficult one. Here in the UK, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been saying, look, this is to do with the pandemic. It's a temporary spike. This will work through the system. But of course, he can't say exactly how long it will take to do so and therefore how long the energy sector will remain under duress. We've seen a, v a variety of different responses across uh, Europe. Spain, for example, has rolled out tax cuts. It's also, also put in place measures targeting extraordinary profits being made in the energy sector and sectors related to the energy sector, trading, uh, for example, to try and make sure that people and industries and businesses aren't making huge profits off the back of these uh, rising prices. Italy's put billions of euros of support in place for uh, consumers to keep prices low for them. It's eliminated some tariffs which have been in place to try and fund the transition to renewable energy. Those have been eliminated temporarily. Uh, the European Union's being called on to put this right at the top of the agenda for the next EU leaders summit in Brussels. Norway, as a producer and exporter of gas, says that it is going to increase production to try and ease some of these issues. Here in the UK, the government's been looking at state-backed loans for bigger companies so that they can stay afloat as they take on new customers from those smaller companies uh, that go bust. The government says the price cap will stay in place. And bear with me, the UK government wants the wind to start blowing again. That's been one of the real problems in the last 12 months. There hasn't been as much wind around as normal, and that means the UK can't rely on the growing uh, provision of wind power that it has been in the last couple of years. Thanks for that. Ollie Barrett in London.